Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. This is episode number 229 of the show. I'm Ramon Mejia, here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course author interviews. This week I have four new Lit RPG reviews for your folks at home. That's going to include uh, Queen of the Queen in the Mud, rather. Also, Earthdom, a post-apocalyptic Lit RPG Ether Collapse book number three. Uh, also, Nothing But Bones, The Wasteland. And last but not least, Giant Lands, Pal Tree, Planet, book number one. So there we go. Before we get into that, we're going to go into Lit RPG News. And this week in Lit RPG News, we just have one nice Lit RPG deal for you folks at home. That's going to be a message from Michael Chatfield, who's the author of several good Lit RPG series. Uh, this month, he's having a, a nice sale on two books in his Amaryllis series, and they're not um, in sequence. The first one is The Trap Mind Project, which is the first book in the Amaryllis series, and the second book on sale is the sixth book in that series, book number six called The Stone Raiders Return. Both books are on sale for 99 cents at a variety of uh, locations, so definitely go check those out. Wonderful series. Um, also an audiobook, so if you get a good deal on the ebook, sometimes uh, Amazon and Apple will give you a nice little deal on the audiobook as well so definitely go check that out uh on the stuff that is out now it's come out recently have it and test to read it it is out for you to enjoy though that includes path of alchemy the fourth book in the glory formation emperor series also uh, outworld awakening and let's see what else fugitivity the fairy's tale book number two also out is the ninth book in the good guy series the four beheadings in a funeral which is actually doing super amazing just came out as of this recording day I'm already almost in the top 100 on all of Amazon, so has a very heavy and dedicated uh, fan base, including this guy. Uh, also out now, though, is uh, Sorrow of Starlight, book number three in the Adept Archives Chronicles, uh, Adept Archives book series. Uh, also out is a short story in the Banhammer Chronicle series. Uh, and uh, I already said Outworld and Warlock, a Little Bridge and uh, story, Marinated Chaos, book number one, is out for you to enjoy. Um, in new Lit RPG audiobooks, we have quite a few uh, titles here, including Planet Heroes Civilian, uh, also Card Mage Academy Rebels is out, uh, Grim Beginnings, The Ashen Plane, book number one, is out as an audiobook, also out is the Genesis Game Volume 1 World Apocalypse series, uh, also out is Sentence to Troll, book number three, which is an entertaining read. Uh, also out is The Land Monsters, which is the eighth book in that particular series. Uh, also out for you to enjoy is the fourth book in the Axe Druid series called Into the Darkness. And Dragon Hack, Blasphemy Online, book number one is out as an audiobook, as is The Great Raid, the fourth book in the Tower of Power series. So there we go. Uh, on to upcoming Little BD, which is where I read out all the stuff that I know is coming out in the near future. Um, so it's just me reading things. We do have a few new additions to this as well. Uh, June the 9th is the sixth book in the Rally of Bender series. June the 9th as well, it'll be a uh, new list, The King's League. On June the 10th, it'll be Frog of War, a narrow rising book number two. June the 12th, Rise of Omniscience, book number six. June 13th, um, The System, Multiverse, book number one. June 14th, Glitch World. June 15th, The Alchemist, book number two. June 16th is uh, Myth Through an Online, book number one, called God Mode. June the 9th, the second book in the Etheria series, um, which is new to the list as well. Uh, also new to the list is June 23rd, Harbinger Nova Online, book number three. June 26th is the third book in the Space Season series. June 30th is Sky Realms Online, book number four. June 30th, as well as Leagues of Losers, book number one, A Cat and His Human. June 30th, this is uh, my new list I think put put on last week, uh, The God's Game, volume number three, Sovereign Rising. Uh, July the 1st, ninth book in the System Apocalypse series will be out. July the 1st as well, and this is new to the list. Reincarnation, The Last Born of Kidarth trilogy. Uh, July the 8th, The Beast Project Stiller, book number two. Um, July the 9th, Legends Online, book number six. July the 14th, Life in Exile, book number two. July 28th, Eternal Online, book number two. July 31st, uh, Arrow of Justice. August the 4th, uh, New List, The Hidden Paladin, The World of Undead Force, book number one, which is a uh, Russian translation story. August the 8th, fourth book in the Bad Guy series. August 18th, Intellectium, book number one. August 27th, Small Unit Tactics, volume one. September the 9th, Dungeon Worlds, a Reborn Online series. 
October the 7th, City of Goblins, The System, book number one. October 26th, The Other World, Underdog, book number four. So there we go. All the stuff that I know that's coming out until October. So there we go. On to new releases and reviews. First up this week is Queen in the Mud, uh, written by Mari. It is 366 pages, $2.99, available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. A girl suddenly vanishes from her world and finds herself drifting in and out of consciousness in a world of pure darkness. The only insight into her precarious situation is a prompt opening before her eyes indicating that the system failed to delete her. The doggedly optimistic and naive teenager Naomi is reborn as a monster into a fantastical world governed by the rigid rules of a suspiciously game-like system. A world full of magic and danger where the familiar mingles with the inexplicable. She finds herself deep in the bizarre, savage forest of the unclaimed lands where deadly monsters prowl in the shadows just out of sight. After a close brush with death, any hope that this could be a lighthearted adventure evaporates as she feels real pain for the first time. The realization sinks in as Naomi comes to terms with this not just being a game, it's her reality now. As of coming to grips with life or death survival situations, she finds herself isn't enough. The description of one of her skills seems to be speaking to her. So there you go. Um... The story shifts around a little bit, and it feels like an online serial story that was collected, edited, and published. Um, like many serial stories, there's not necessarily a, a, a overarching plot for the entire thing. It's more like a um, a story that shifts focus as it goes. Very slice of life. Um, that doesn't mean it's not a, a good storytelling now. Um, this story starts out as a re-monster story with main character reincarnated as a salamander. Um, and the story just kind of follows her as she explores her little slice of this magical RPG fantasy world. Each tries not to get in, gains levels to experience, uh, to gain experience points to level rather. Um, after a few monster evolutions, it shifts as the main character once again becomes humanoid. And then the story explodes into this much larger story with action, magical training, community, light town building, time travel, and some small adventures. Um, it was generally fun to read the entire thing. And um, it was just kind of fun to kind of follow her adventure uh, where each chapter led. Um, and there were, def- there were definitely like some very distinct story arcs in here. Where it was like, oh, this is this was like an arc, and this was like an arc. And you can tell like they're, they're, de- they're connected, but they, you could almost read them independently. Um, on the game mechanics side of things, this is absolutely RPG from the start. Lots of stats, character sheets, abilities, skills they go with use or applied skill points. Um, there's also good magical training and minor ten ability elements. Fun stuff with lots of show numbers. Um, overall, this is just a fun story, and it was really, it was almost great for me. A few little bits kind of took a, a little bit away from me, but very good. Um, a bits of slice of life with serial formatting. Um, again, there are several plot lines that pop up and get resolved as you all story, several more that, that don't. Um, you can kind of tell like, oh, this is stuff that's going to be dealt with in the future. Um, but overall, it was just a, a fun read uh, the entire time, and I finished it in basically one sitting. So it's always a, a really good indicator that I enjoyed this a lot. So for me, uh, it gets the high score of the week, which is a 7.8 out of 10. That's Queen in the Mud uh, with a high score that's really good with a score of 7.8 out of 10. And next up, we have Earthdom, a post-apocalyptic little RPG, Ether Collapse, book number three, written by Ryan Darun. It is 383 pages, $5.99, available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. Territorial growth, ancient conspiracies, the apocalypse is getting worse. Rockland Barclay has, was saved and pulled into an alternate realm moments before his death. He thought that sacrificing himself would save the Grito and give them a chance to prosper. He wasn't expecting to open his eyes reborn on the altar. Gaia has ordered the golems to protect humanity, but their protection against the environment is sending humanity to the brink of starvation. Rocky needs to find his family, and his only option is to search through survivors one by one. Every person saved increases the population of the Grotto, but it is, but is also another mount to feed. After saving thousands and not finding a single familiar face, new intelligence reaches the Grotto, sending Rocky against a challenge that even the King of Apes couldn't overcome. Okay, um... The scope of this story is expanding. If you if you read book number one and two, you probably already read book number one. A lot of people really enjoyed it, especially the like the fans in the series. Um, this is not the kind of story you can 
just jump into book three and kind of understand anything. There's a lot of setups, so it is one so you have to read in series, uh, and in order, I should say. And the scope of this one definitely expands past the sp smaller stories, the books one and two. Um, the main character and his group get territory access to like the galactic equivalent of the internet, and they learn just how humanity as a whole is faring. Um, and after dealing with a few internal developments, the group works to help survivors. Um, in major metropolitan cities and other locations, find and along the way find new enemies. Um, there's a good deal of action, a bit of kingdom building in the story this time, and a bit of crafting and personal development. Um, a little less crafting, I, I personally want, I should say. Um, overall, it's a good read that fans of the series have devoured. Um, so if you enjoy it, the other book in the series, you're going to like this too. I did. Gets an easy score, 7.7 .7 out of 10. Um, that's Urtum, a post-apocalyptic liberty series, the third book in the Ether Collapse series, with a score of 7.7 .7 out of 10. And next up, we have Nothing But Bones, The Wasteland, written by Jay Curran. It is 405 pages, $3.88. It is available on Kindle Limited. And here's the author's description. After the exodus of all life. Our galaxy is left empty and desolate, but in the absence of life, undead energy surges. Millennia after the last humans fled the galaxy, only the dead are left to roam the Earth. On this barren wasteland, Solus awakens. With no memories or even a personality, he is cast into a dangerous world. He will need to learn fast, uh, needs to learn fast if he is to keep his new existence, for he is not alone. Okay, um, I think... <laughs> The novel description and the cover art, although I like the cover art, it doesn't do much to tell you what the story is about. Um, it, it gives you kind of a gist of things. Um, this is a little RPG monster evolution story where the main character is a skeleton minion on a post-apocalyptic earth. He becomes awakened or gains sentience and is given an RPG interface in which he sees his character, sheet stats, and gets information about how to survive. Um, the first temperature on the story was actually kind of slow for me. Um, and it's, it's, it, it happens the way that it gets kind of happens um, as the main character is just awakening. And so he has a limited perception and limited ability to perceive and understand the, the world around him and why things work the way they do. And a lot of uh, that first 10% is just him kind of having a monologue about what's happening to him. And it's very kind of isolated. So I think kind of when I'm probably about 5% too long for me um, and I started to get a little bored with it but after that 10% mark when the main character actually starts doing his evolutions and you get other um characters in the story the pacing really picks up um and 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 the story kind of expands to you you get um more world building the story gets bigger with uh, different undead factions vying for power and controlling their brethren um and yet it, it's still it's very it's entertaining um the big draw remains reading about in the story of the fights and the possible evolutions of the main character uh, that he contain as he grows in power and gains resources so um good stuff if you like like the monster evolution if you like read monster stories um you're probably gonna like this so i don't i'm not classifying as read monster i guess there's no human being re, you know reincarnated or reborn or anything it's really just like a, a monster that already exists on this plane but he's still doing that kind of monster evolution anything um, on the game mechanics side of things, absolutely little BG. Reader gets regular uh, progression uh, st stuff. There's You see stats and skills and all that's shown to the audience and the reader. Um, and you get to see kind of a game, gamer like mentality of the main character deciding how he's going to grant up the requirements for his next evolution um, and weighing the pros and cons of each possible one, which is always kind of the fun part of, of this kind of story. Um, I'll note that in kind of a later section of the story, some of well, the RPG mechanics, uh, the notification the character disappears for story reasons which i'm not sure why um I, I'm, I just personally hope that he comes back in future books because that's definitely a key component to this being liturgy um overall it's a good story again once you kind of get past that 10 percent mark um and if you don't mind the slice of life story time so i enjoyed it gets a good solid score of 7.5 out of 10 which is a good score for me um nothing but bones the wasteland with the score 7.5 out of 10. Okay, next up is Giant Lands Palchi Planet Book Number One, written by Aaron Oster. It is 330 pages, $4.99, it's available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description Zindi has always been different. As a pal tree, a distant cousin to the dwarves, he and all others of his race absorb trains from the very first item they touch upon birth. Instead of absorbing the essence of stone or steel, like most others in his town, 
Zundi accidentally absorbs those of a beetle. Those who are different are often treated poorly, and for Zundi, this was no exception. His time in the small town is coming to an end, though. The Great Journey, the time when Pal, all pal to use of age set out in search of the race's most valuable treasure, is upon them. Beyond his small town, Zundi will discover a world far grander and fantastic than he could have ever imagined. Travel to the Green Sea, the last known sighting of the Viridian Core, will be far from easy. Before we can even lay eyes on the sprawling ocean, Zundi will first need to pass through the giant lands, and with powerful guardians blocking his path, the task seems impossible. Zundi was never one to give up and quit, though, and to him, there is no greater thrill than facing a challenge and coming out the victor. So there we go. Um, I really enjoyed the first 20% of this novel. Um, it is steeped with good world building, good character development. Um, it, there's a good description of the RPD mechanic as becoming part of the culture and history of this fantasy world. Um, and there's also like, it's a good character development and this coming of age aspect that was really kind of interesting, um, and, and, and satisfying. Um, one of the few things that took away from the story though, for me was kind of this odd plot turn. The novel takes about the 38% mark. Um, it's a departure from, and this isn't spoiler, it's in the novel description. Uh, there are stated goals for like a, up to that point, uh, the main character doing this coming age ceremony, um, wanting to go through the gates of the giant land, getting to the green sea, searching for this, uh, um, cultural treasure, the rooting core. Um, and at the 30% mark, that, seems to just like take this left turn that I wasn't expecting. And it's not a bad story arc, but it, it does kind of shift the focus of what I was expecting based upon the goals that were, were described to me in the earlier part of the novel. Um, the story, again, it doesn't take a bad turn. It's just, oh, that well, I, I didn't see this coming. And I'm like, okay, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about this. Um, and ultimately, it all works really well. It's, it's an entertaining story turn. Um, but it was something like took something because it was it took me in a direction that wasn't described. And, and and in part, it makes sense for the character's personality and his background. But in other respects, like, oh, I didn't see that um, personality of him being like this um, hero of justice almost. Um, that, that, that trait is very different from the earlier parts to describe them. And that's okay because that's character progression and everything. But for me, it, it took something away because, oh, that just wasn't expected. And so an expectation that was essentially set for me in the story earlier on wasn't really met um, as the story goes on. But again, that's small thing. It's still an enjoyable story. Just, okay, took a little bit away. Um, game mechanic-wise, things are solid in the story. Uh, they are to be RPG mechanics are part of the world setting and cultures of the various races. Um, and again, this is described a little bit in the story already, uh, as infants, the main character's race gets special attributes based upon the first thing they touch besides their mother. And so, um, again, a variety of abilities. There are also character sheets, stats, skills, special abilities, and a number of items that give temporary or permanent boosts. And again, it's all really well woven into the world building of the story. So good, good kudos there to the author. Overall, it's another good story. I've, I've, I've enjoyed, I think everything I've read for <laughs> Oster. Um, so then this is another one. So for me, it gets a solid 7.5 out of 10. Uh, that's a good score for me. Um, Giant Lands, Pal T, Planet, book number one with a score of 7.5 out of 10. Oh, that's it, everyone. Show's just about done. Thanks for hanging out with me, for listening, for watching. Uh, remember, you can contact us, uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, and our webpage at littlebitypodcast.com. Look for us on all those places, the Little Bitty Podcast. We're it. We're, 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 the, we're the podcast that just does little PG stuff. Um, you can also find links in our show notes for a number of Facebook group where Little Bitty authors and readers mingle and we talk and we chat about this thing we love and fun memes about bacon and beer and whatever else we're interested in all kinds of good stuff um if you enjoy the podcast and want to support us and we should perform help get the podcast free and ad free you can find out all the ways to support us at littlebitpodcast.com slash support um and until we can hang out again folks remember to go read some lit rpg